In this town, older, Amira. it was always a day of great anticipation as everyone got ready to light up their shop windows, their houses and their Christmas trees. From the moment the people of the town woke that day, there was a feeling of excitement that crackled in the air. And no one was more excited than a little girl called Twinkle. <laughs> The day we switch the lights on. I'm not too sure, love. I'll have to check the calendar. No, Mum. You definitely don't need to. It's today. Yeah, I know it is. I saw Mr. Robbins all tangled up in fairy lights. And anyway, I can just tell by the way I feel inside. Like the feeling when you drink hot chocolate and it makes your tummy all warm. Like there's this bubbly, busy feeling. Like a million lights are about to come on. Well, we better get the lights out then. I better go up to the loft to get them. Unless... Unless what? Unless you want to go up and get them. Wait, wait, me? Go up into the loft on my own. Twinkle had asked to climb the ladder to the loft loads of times, but Mum had always said... You're a bit small. Or... It's a bit dangerous. Or... Maybe next year. But this birthday, Twinkle had turned ten. And that's double figures, which is quite grown up, you know, so... Well, I think you're old enough, and you'll be careful climbing the ladder, won't you? I will, I promise. Right, well, what are you waiting for? If we're going to get all our lights up before tonight, you'd better get a move on. Right, yeah. Twinkle looked at her mum and beamed. The trip to the loft was sure to be an adventure. Somewhere, in a little office on the other side of town, Mrs. Primley was hard at work. Mrs. Primley was the chairperson of the Christmas committee. She was in charge of all things festive. It was a very important job and kept Mrs. Primley extremely busy, ticking all the jobs off her list. We want to switch the lights on at a quarter to six o'clock, not a moment sooner or later. Quarter to six. Right. Yes. Got it. There is so much to do between now and then, I think we ought to divvy up the jobs between us and get cracking room. Yes? Do you agree? Yes. Absolutely, Mrs. P. was Mrs. Primley's assistant. He loved Christmas and tried really hard to make it as magical as possible. He spent a lot of his time saying things like Yes, Mrs. P. And mm -hmm, I can do that. And Always happy to help. Right then, going through the day between now and a quarter to six o'clock, we need to one, make a hot cup of tea just to set us up for the day ahead. I thought you could take that one, Rube. Yes, will do. Two, complete bulb check of all town centre lighting. I put your name beside that. Great. I love checking the bulbs. Three, complete sight check and litter pick of the area. That's, oh, another one for you. Four, check in on the maintenance work taking place by the Christmas tree. That one's me. I thought that work had happened last week. Sadly, it was delayed, but the engineers have assured me it will be complete it? with all electricity freely flowing by half wrong. past I'm five o'clock at the very wrong. latest. But that only leaves us 15 minutes until the switch on. I'm live. John, don't worry. And if it isn't for some reason, well, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, well, the lights don't work and Father Christmas can't find his way and Christmas is room for everyone. Indeed, a highly unlikely possibility. But if by some chance that were to happen, and we had to cancel Christmas, well, it's only Christmas, and it's only for this year. There'll be plenty more. Cancel Christmas? 
It wouldn't be the end of the world now, would it? But, Mrs. Pringley, cancel Christmas. That can't happen. Oh, no, of course not. Only as a last resort. Shall we get on? Yes, but... One moment, please. Citizens of Old Ham, this is Mrs. Priscilla Pringley here, chair of the Christmas Committee. Just a reminder that the Christmas tree lights will be switched on this very evening at a quarter to six o'clock. We do hope to see you all there. Where was I? Uh, number five. Complete the risk assessment for this evening's event. Now, I put myself down for that one, unless of course you want to... No, no. Thanks so much. Besides, you'll have your work cut out counting all those bowls. And picking up all that litter, it's been awfully windy. Did you put the kettle on? Back in the loft, Twinkle, surrounded by boxes, was searching for the Christmas lights. Which box is it, Mum? I can't remember. On the opposite side to Uncle Jasper's stuff. Which side is Uncle Jasper's stuff on? I can't remember. Never mind, never mind them. And with that, Twinkle began to search the boxes, one by one. Now, we can't go any further without explaining a little about Uncle Jasper. <laughs> Uncle Jasper was... Uncle Jasper was... Really hard to describe in everyday words. He was the best, most brilliant uncle anyone could ever ask for. He made amazing things and he'd gone away to travel the world and have adventures and discover new things. And he'd left his whole life in boxes in the loft. Twinkle! Pip's here! I'm sending him up. Pip was Twinkle's best friend. Can't believe you haven't got your lights up yet. I'm just looking for them now. I'm really fast at putting them up. You are coming to the switch on, aren't you? Of course we are. I hope they fix it in time. What do you mean? Something to do with electricity. Their engineer's working by the Christmas tree now. They have to fix it. I'm sure they will. Well, you better get on finding your lights. Come on, you can help me. In the Christmas committee office, Mrs. Primley sipped her tea calmly. of old Ham, Mrs. Priscilla Primley here, chair of the Christmas committee. As we count down to our light switch on this evening, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for remaining so positive in such a difficult and dark year. We have made it through some challenging times, and when the Christmas tree lights come on tonight, it will be a symbol of the happiness coming back to our wonderful town. She was right. It had been a very difficult year. Almost as if a shadow had fallen over the town. There hadn't been a great deal to celebrate. So this Christmas wasn't like any other. It was the Christmas that was going to bring back joy to the people of Alden. Thank goodness they had Mrs. Primley to make sure everything went to plan. Finished already? How many? 3,713 bulbs. Excellent. So, that's tea, tick, bulbs, tick. How's the tea? Lovely, thank you. Not without room for improvement, but well on the way to a 7 out of 10. As lovely as this is, and it truly is, I think you have somewhere to be. I can almost hear the litter calling you. Please, Room, come and save me from being carried off by the wind. Oh, yes. I'll get on then. Bye! Back in the loft, Twinkle and Pip were still trying to find the Christmas lights. Is all this stuff at Uncle Jasper's? Yeah, it's from all of his adventures. I love hearing about his adventures. Some of them are probably full of brilliant things he's made. I love it when he makes brilliant things. Me too. And for a moment, they looked at each other and a little smile crept onto both their faces and then spread all the way from one cheek to the other.
yeah, I almost forgot. What's this? I don't know. They move some boxes out of the way to reveal a rather dusty looking wooden box. I've never seen it before. I wonder what's inside. The two children looked closely at the box, trying to work out how you might open it. But there was no obvious lock or latch. Twinkle leaned in closely to the box and blew it, throwing a cloud of dust up into the light. That's better. Suddenly, there was a voice. It certainly is. Who said that? Scootle's the name. W what are you? Where did you come from? I'm a light mechanic. Need more light in your life? Just call for me. I'm one of the best in the business. You're a light mechanic? Indeed I am. I mean, don't get me wrong, we need the dark sometimes. It certainly has its place. But light? Well, everything seems better in the light, don't you think? Scootle pointed to the box. I've been waiting for you to discover that so I can get it finished. Get it finished? Of course. What else would you do with an unfinished thing? What is it? Scootle looked at them and smiled. That is a mechanical light machine. It's the only one of its kind. A mechanical light oh. machine? What is it? I have no idea. But I do know that where light is needed, I must go. And if we can get that wonderful machine working, there will be enough light for everyone. We? Oh, yes. I'll need your help. I'll need everyone's help. Right. Let's have a look. Are you real or magic? What a very strange question. Magic is real, isn't it? Wonderful! Isn't it? Now then, we just need to find the instructions. With that, Twinkle, Pip and Scootle started searching through all Uncle Jasper's things again. Very carefully. Box by box. Until... What's this? Some sort of... That's it! That's the instructions! It doesn't look much like instructions. They're just some pictures and some squiggles. They rolled out...